Give the gift of Rev Voice this Christmas. Rejoice with Rev Voice when you sign up and enter to win 12 days of giveaways, including a 2015 Jeep Wrangler from Bahamas Bus and Truck. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, two shot in the Capitol near a busy intersection and one dies en route to hospital. The Commissioner of Police speaks after officers shoot and kill a man this morning. The Minister of Tourism stepping in to resolve the issue of gratuities at Bahamar. And Family Island MP say VAT will cripple small businesses on the Out Islands. Plus, Cable Bahamas opens its newest location with Flair. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. Police had to shut down Soldier Road at the intersection of Prince Charles Drive today as they process the scene of yet another violent death. This time, two teenagers fell under a hail of bullets, leaving one dead and the other clinging to life. Police say a man wearing an ankle bracelet was shot to death as he was leaving the funeral of his brother at around 1.30 this afternoon. The incident happened on Soldier Road as the 18-year-old victim was driving south with his 14-year-old brother in tow, heading to the repast. Chief Superintendent of Police in charge of CDU, Paul Roll, fills us in on what happened next. They had occasion to stop at the traffic light when persons in a gold Honda pull across them, two men exited, two persons exited, pull a black tan mask over their faces, ran up on this vehicle and began discharging shots into the vehicle. Rawl said the 18-year-old driver was pronounced dead upon arrival to Princess Margaret Hospital. His younger brother at last report was in critical condition. 18-year-old driver, he was shot multiple times about the body. And also, the, his younger brother, age 14, he was shot multiple times and they sped off en route to the Princess Margaret Hospital where they were intercepted by a police vehicle that assisted them to PMH where they were examined. Assistant Commissioner of Police Stephen Dean said the victim had just been released from prison. He said police are constantly faced with the challenge of serious crime being committed by or toward people who are being electronically monitored. This is what the, the challenges the police are being faced with every day, law enforcement. We do our part that get these people in front of the courts. We are doing it. So we have to find a way, even as a country, all the systems, all the systems of justice have to work together to help us to make sure that we keep these persons locked behind bars. But as long as they are on the streets, they're not going to work. They're going to continue with the life of crime. They're going to continue to use the firearms. They're going to continue to become a menace to society. We need now the entire country, everybody. We are at a crossroad right now. And if the issue of persons being released on bail in a short space of time is an issue, that is something we have to look at. Dean said police will no doubt continue to arrest perpetrators, but they can't do anything about them being released on bail. We know what the problem is in our country. We have to solve it. But and additionally, we have to talk to these persons um, who are being parents. Um, you have these children who are being released on bail. You cannot um, cloak them, so to speak. You cannot encourage them in the life of crime. You have to talk to them. The responsibility of the parent in part is non-negotiable. The police try our best. We hold family conferences, we roll them over and over. Talk to these young men, try to. Another problem that we see that we are encountering, some of these persons who are shot, we get them in custody, broad daylight, they see the shooter, then they come to the police, they don't know who shot them. Don't know who shot them. Don't know who shot them. 
Dean said the country needs all arms of the criminal justice system to work together to keep crime at a minimum. He said this situation warrants an outcry from upstanding citizens and community leaders. Today's murder marks the 116th for the year, according to NB12 records. A man was shot and killed by police early this morning after, according to Commissioner of Police Allison Greenslade, he made the first move with an illegal firearm to cause harm to those officers. Commissioner Greenslade said after reviewing the case himself, he's confident that officers acted within the law. He also gave a stern warning to those thinking about challenging the police. Kyle Joaquin has that story. And that's as simple as Greenslade says he can put it. According to the commissioner, just this morning around 2.30 a.m. outside an establishment in the area of Golden Gates No. 1, a young man armed with an illegal handgun approached two officers with the intent to kill them. If you confront a police officer or any other law enforcement professional and you're armed with an offensive, dangerous, deadly instrument, and in any case to wit, an illegal firearm, the law is crystal clear. And those officers are trained and they are prepared to de defend themselves and to de defend the good citizens of this country. Do not attempt to take on a police officer. It's a bad decision. Now, this is the most recent of several police-involved shootings this year. But according to Greenslade, this man had a criminal past. One officer withdrew quickly his service, issued revolver, pistol, I'm sorry, fired upon the armed suspect, hitting him. The suspect attempted to run away with his gun still being clutched in his hand. He fell, and where he fell, his illegal weapon fell. EMS was called, however, the man died on the scene. Greenslade said police have already met with the man's family, who he described as decent people. Greenslade says there's never any joy where there is life lost, whether the person is innocent or has a criminal history. But he is urging those parents who know their child has committed a criminal offense to do the right thing and turn them into police. I'm asking our pastors to stand in unity with us and to preach it from the pulpit and to remind parents to go back to their homes and their children and to say, don't bring me stolen property. Don't bring a stolen car to my yard. Do not bring your bad friends to my house with guns in their possession. That same gun that you ignore, mom and dad, brother and sister, relative and friend, is going to be the very same gun if you're not careful that will be accidentally discharged in that family, killing some young child. A gun that's going to be used in that family when that young man gets angry and turns it on one of his family members. We've seen it before. How can you sleep with a clear conscience? Knowing that your child has murdered someone. Knowing that your relative has murdered someone. Knowing that your husband has murdered someone. Knowing that your boyfriend, your fiance, has murdered someone. How can you, pray tell me, in a Christian nation, sleep? Turn in the murderer, murderers. Turn in the armed robbers and turn in those people with illegal firearms. Greenslade said just like in the murder investigation of one of their own, Sergeant Wayne Roll, they need the public's assistance. Someone, he said, knows something and knows these lawbreakers. Roll's killer is still at large, and some, like Police Staff Association Chairman Dwight Smith, have stated that off-duty police officers may stand a better chance if they are armed. While a visually upset Greenslade today said that's not the case, and he will meet with Smith on Monday to set the record straight. And I'm going to ask him finally to stop it. I've said it to him privately, and I'm Mr. Battle, you send for him for me again on Monday. I'll do so, Commissioner. And I blame the press for entertaining it. This view that because you have a gun, you are all powerful and you're safe. That is a flawed impression. If you've got a gun on you and your back is turned and a bad person know that you have a gun, you're dead if they come upon you from the rear. Greenslade says the investigation into this morning's police shooting will be completed soon and handed over to Her Majesty's coroner. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. And Greenslade is also questioning what went wrong in court that led to the recent release of a gun smuggler that was already on bail. According to the commissioner, the man had recently been captured in possession of four illegal firearms, despite being on bail for allegedly bringing illegal guns into the country. Of a prolific, serious offender that we had found in possession of, I believe it was, 
chief superintendent role for guns, for illegal guns. And with all my heart, hoping that we could get that man before a court, convicted for the holidays and kept behind bars, released back into the community yesterday. I cannot tell you what a difficult position that puts me in. A man that I know have committed serious crimes before, a man that I know will commit serious crimes again. And I speak publicly so all and sundry might hear me, respectfully. We had done exactly what we should have done. And we cannot allow that to continue. Greenslade said he will be working along with the Minister of National Security to find out how the man could be released on bail and what can be done to prevent such releases from happening again. I believe as I speak, my minister is also doing uh, some work. Uh, I hate to bother him on the weekend, but I know how committed he is likewise to seek to determine what has gone wrong and why did it go wrong. But that is not within the police domain, and I'm not going to allow anyone to put that back in the police domain. What is unfortunate is now we have a very significant problem. Because I'm of the view that if that man had four guns which we found, he probably has a lot more than that. And I know that they're all listening to me, the good and the bad. And I'm going to look at you and say it. It's a problem for this commissioner, and I'm asking every one of my officers to stand with me. I cannot, cannot ignore that. It's a problem. The public deserves better. It's a problem. In other news tonight, Tourism Minister Obi Wilchcombe said he will intervene in the dispute brewing between the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union and the Malia Resort. Since the hotel has announced that employees will no longer receive gratuities, employees have been disgruntled and on Thursday the situation nearly became violent. Wilchcombe, who agreed that all-inclusive is the way to go for the hotel, said he will meet with all stakeholders, including those at Bahamar, to ensure labor negotiations no longer become hostile. On Thursday, dozens of Malia employees were joined by members of the Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union after the hotel announced that it would follow the all-inclusive route, which means that the 15 percent gratuity would no longer be uh, added to their bills. At one point, union leader had to intervene as hotel security shoved an MB12 cameraman. Hotel union president Nicole Martin said the same is 15 percent gratuity is what not only attracts many to the hotel industry, but pays mortgages and college tuitions. While which Kim does agree that the communication between hotel and executive and employees could have been better, he doesn't feel causing an uproar that could eventually be seen across the world is the best way to go. I think we have to sit and talk because the world is watching. And if we're trying to rebuild our country in terms of tourism, then our economy, then appreciate that every bit of information getting out in the world does not help us. If it appears to be negative, it appears that we're doing things that uh, we could have done a different way. I should like to see all sides sit and talk. I would be taking it upon myself to call in the uh, union for a brief on um, the all-inclusives, just to make sure that they understand, to give them a power of strength in which uh, they can negotiate and show them how other countries have done things and how ways in which to go about creating gratuity. Wilchcombe said this is all a part of the changes that must be made for the country to go forward. He said many hotels, especially within the Caribbean region, have already taken on that ideal of being all-inclusive. The truth is many of these countries have gravitated toward the uh, all-inclusive. That's the brand. It works because a visitor coming to the country uh, pays for everything before they get here and their money that they bring is just for spend. And so you are likely to get more because what we've discovered is that the visitor does not want to stay in one property. They want to move all over the place. So they do spend. Now as for whether the other brands that will be a part of the Bahamar group of companies will take on the same all-inclusive characteristic, Bolchkum says no. Bahama, what they're offering is uh, different type properties. Uh, and um, you know that Rosewood is not an all-inclusive, and you know that Hyatt is not going to be an all-inclusive Malia. That's their brand. That's what they've done around the world, and that's why that's an acceptance, such as Sandals, such as Breezes, such as Rio. So we do have the all-inclusives in the Bahamas now, 
uh, but they must work out a paradigm that's workable for all. The union must demand for its employees. That's acceptable. Uh, we know the union will demand, but my argument is, well, as the union demands, it's imperative upon the owners of Malaya and Bahama to sit and work out a plan. It's imperative because we all have to work together. What we must never do is leave out the human capital. The tourism minister says because Bahamians are the most important piece of the puzzle to ensure the success of the country's tourism industry, they must be treated fairly. It must never be seen that you are doing everything for the investor and forgetting your people. Bring your people along. And the people are asking for one respect. The union is saying, respect us, talk to us, work with us. Let's cause this to happen in the right way. I think it can, but it requires you starting from the premise that there's sensitivity involved, uh, there's an understanding, comprehension involved, and let's find the resolution that all will be uh, happy with.